Well, surprise, surprise. Yesterday we didn't know, but today we do know the fate of a cruise ship that caught fire over the weekend. And are you a redneck woman or do you like redneck women? Uh, look, there might be a cruise for you. And I got to tell you about a cruise passenger that's left me scratching my head a bit had a bad experience on a cruise ship. Her $6,000 cruise balcony was grotty, which I had to look up what that word, basically unpleasant. Uh, but the, the way she went about complaining is kind of weird and not shocking that she's still dissatisfied. I don't know. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lira Loga. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. For your face on a Monday, Monday the 25th of March 2024. And uh, I had a big weekend. Uh, you know, I did the show yesterday, but I did something on Saturday I didn't think I was going to publicly admit. I, I, was, I became a joiner. Normally, I'm not a joiner. I have problems with authority. I think my therapist, my wife, anybody you've ever encountered, like, I'm not good with authority. And so I'm not normally a joiner. Normally, I'm a leader. But uh, I was a joiner on Saturday, and I felt pretty good about it a couple days later. Other than the fact that I did it on a Saturday, I joined the Costco. 40, I drove 45 minutes away from my house to join the Costco. Why, you may ask? Well, because I like buying in bulk. I like buying in bulk and I like looking at TVs. It's a, uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. We have a Sam's Club in town. We're getting a BJ's Wholesale Club, but I do feel like, I, I do feel like Costco is the apex predator when it comes to, when it comes to wholesale clubs. I, I don't know. Uh, somebody tell me I'm wrong. I don't think you can beat that hot dog deal. Uh, I'm never going to Costco again on a Saturday. That was the dumbest thing. I, I have the freedom to go any day of the week. Uh, I went on Saturday because I was I was following somebody else. And um, yeah, but what, what do you think? Where do you stand on wholesale clubs? Uh, leave a comment below. Cruise news story number one. Like I said yesterday, we didn't know. And then today we do. Surprise, surprise. The, the Carnival Freedom caught on fire over the weekend. The whale tail, the, the side of the whale tail that didn't catch on fire a couple years ago. What's the deal with the whale tail on the Carnival Freedom? Holy moly, that thing's like a fire magnet. It's just bad luck, folks. That's just the way it goes. There was some talk yesterday that everything was going to be copacetic, that everything was going to be okay. But as they assess the damage of the fire to the funnel on the Carnival Freedom, they realized that the stability was not quite there to continue their cruising operations in a normal way. So Carnival reached out to the guests booked on the next two cruises on the Carnival Freedom late afternoon and said, uh, it's canceled. Sorry, cancellated. March the 25th sailing, canceled. March the 29th sailing, canceled. They're getting everybody back to Port Canaveral. Probably already happened today. They're getting everybody off that cruise ship. Then they're going to make the little trip down to Freeport, Bahama, Bahamas, Bahamas, down to Freeport, Bahamas, and then try to stabilize, try to stabilize what's left of the burned down funnel. As far as compensation, passengers that were canceled on 25th and 29th will get a 100% refund of their cruise fare, and then they will also get a 100% future cruise credit to use again on this cruise on the Carnival Freedom. <sighs> yeah, glad nobody was hurt. That's the big thing. Nobody was hurt, and uh, that's wild, wild, wild stuff, wild stuff. Cruise news story number two. Royal Caribbean does it again. Have you heard that Barcelona, Spain is trying to limit the amount of cruise passengers or where cruise ships can dock in Barcelona? You've heard all that, right? Well, hey, in the midst of all that, Royal Caribbean got approved to build a brand new terminal in Barcelona. What's going on? It's interesting. It's a partnership between Royal Caribbean and Cruise Terminals International. There was a bidding process for a brand new terminal in Barcelona. Only one cruise line bid. That was Royal Caribbean. And surprise, 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 they were awarded the contract for the new terminal. And some people there said, hey, but I thought we were trying to limit cruise stuff here in Barcelona. And the people said, well, we had this working before all that cruise ban stuff. Now, it's going to be interesting. The new cruise terminal is going to have to, you know, follow pretty stringent environmental constraints. It's going to have to be ready for shore power, those kind of things. But uh, yeah, 
85 million euros, and this thing should be ready to go spring of 2027. It's going to the Adosset Wharf in Barcelona. I'm not familiar with Barcelona. I think there is a couple places where you can dock there, and I'm not sure if this is where they are actually limiting, but it's all part of that process. Um, congratulations, Rogue. First, you got the terminal in Galveston. Now you got one in Barcelona. Cruising continues to grow. How about that? Look, I said it in the intro. Are you a redneck woman? Or do you just like that song by Gretchen Wilson? I'm a redneck woman. I don't think she likes that song. I heard an interview the other day with Gretchen Wilson where she's like, I don't want to be defined by that. I mean, I am that, and I appreciate people connecting with that. Six Man has announced that there's going to be a Boots on the Water cruise. This is a country music cruise. It's going to happen February the 8th through the 13th, 2025. Five-day voyage, Norwegian gym going to the Bahamas. Six Man's really like the the you know the the main player when it comes to these theme cruises. Boots on the Water, country stars, Big and Rich, Gretchen Wilson. Craig Morgan, Jody Messina, Lone Star, Montgomery Gentry, uh, Little Texas, Susie Boggess. So, sounds like a good time. Going to have whiskey tastings. Going to be country. I love country music. I lived in Music City, USA for 28 years, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, you're the only 10 I see, but no, this would be exciting. Who's your favorite country star? You know, uh, I love Willie Nelson. My dad loved Willie Nelson, so I, I really do like Willie Nelson. I like Garth. I like the early Garth Brooks stuff. But but you know what one of my favorite all-time country music songs is? Is Elvira by the Oak Ridge Boys, just because of the deep bass part. Giddy up, boom, bop, boom, bop, ba, bow, bow. Giddy up, boom, bop, boom, bop, ba, bow, bow. hi yo, silver. Hey, away. Shout out, Ludacris. Do you like the country music? Would you do this cruise? Leave a comment below. Uh, look, it's popular. I don't know what cruise news story that we're on, but Virgin Voyages announced last month that they would be having these month-long Mediterranean cruises where you could pay under $10,000, $9,990 for a month worth of cruising. They called them the Cruise Pass. And while it was so popular in their bookings, they're now extending it. They're also bringing the Resilient Lady to play from Athens. We got three new Cruise Passes available. In June, you can go on The Resilient Lady for under $10,000 for two people. Uh, June the 2nd through June the 30th, they include the high-speed internet. They also have a July, two options, June the 30th through the 28th or July the 7th through August the 4th. Uh, I wish they would do this down here in the Caribbean. But look, uh, the idea of going to the med for a month for under $10,000 for a couple and being on a you know high-tech cruise ship, Working from the cruise ship. You guys know how I feel about it. I like it. I like it. Okay, look. Uh, we talked about Carnival Cruise News Story number one. Royal Cruise News Story number two. Six Man was Cruise News Story number three. Virgin was Cruise News Story number four. Cruise News Story number five. There's a drought over in the Panama Canal Zone, and it's already caused one cruise line to cancel their Panama Canal cruise. Greg Mortimer... I don't, is that even a cruise line? Greg Mortimer. It's probably high end. This is too highfalutin for me. Greg Mortimer Expedition Cruise Line. They've canceled their April the 20th, 2024 transit through the Panama Canal because of low water levels. Uh, not a lot of rain over there, a little droughty. The water is down. Greg Mortimer said not enough water to get our ship through the Panama Canal. And just for clarification, the ship is called Greg Mortimer. The cruise line's Aurora Cruises. Who cares? It's Greg Mortimer. None of us are going on Greg Mortimer. Maybe one guy out there with a fat bankroll going on Greg Mortimer. But it does, uh, does it could be some foreboding. It could be some uh, not good stuff for the major cruise lines that use the Panama Canal to transit their cruise ships from the East Coast to the West Coast up to Seattle for that Alaska season that's coming up. So there could be a bit of a challenge with uh, that. Hopefully we'll get some rain in the Panama Canal. None of the major cruise lines have canceled their Panama Canal stuff right now, but gosh, that would be a worst case scenario if they couldn't get their cruise ships through the canal. They could go all the way down uh, Southern America through Drake's Passage. Uh, that Southern, South America, Drake's Passage. Anybody got a Panama Canal? Canal cruise scheduled coming up. Have you heard anything? Uh, hopefully it's uh, much ado about nothing. Leave a comment below. I still have two more cruise news stories for you. One about MSC going boldly where no man has gone before. I don't think that's true, but someplace where I didn't think a cruise ship would be going. And then we have this lady that complained in a weird way about her dirty balcony. And I uh, 
we got to talk about that. But before I do either one of those things, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in Carousing, Man, we're getting close to 250,000 subscribers. We're getting close to 100 million video views. We're getting close to seven years making cruising content. That'd be great if all those things would converge. I don't think I'm getting to 100 million, but I think we'll get to, uh, at the same time, I think we'll get to 250,000 subscribers first. We'll definitely get to seven years, maybe around the same time, 100 million views after that. Uh, a lot of great milestones going on here, but we'd love for you to be a part of the Loca fam. This is me bringing you into the fold. Uh, please be a part of the tribe of the La Lita Loca cruising community, Loca fam, by subscribing. Notification bell. The costing thing. Uh, I don't, you know, there's a lot of barriers. Some people aren't joiners. <laughs> <laughs> like me, but I subscribe to a lot of people. I guess I am a joiner in that way. Uh, I try to support my other creators. Okay, uh, MSC has made its way with its newest cruise ship, the MSC Poesia. Guess where they went? They went to the Amazon, to the, the Amazon River. And I didn't realize the cruise ships could navigate part of the Amazon, but as part of the 2024 world cruise that the MSC Poesia is on, it's made several stops in the region. It entered the river on March the 9th. It went to the capital city of Manus on March the 13th. And it's got like four more stops in the river before it gets out. The reason I mention it is a lot of times we think of cruising just to the Caribbean or, oh, okay, we'll go over and do a you know, river cruise in Europe, or maybe we'll go to Alaska. Cruising is amazing. You can go everywhere. I mean, there's uh, obviously you're not going to be able to go to Wyoming, but you know, for the most part, there's a lot of great exotic places that you can encounter because of a cruise ship. And if you've ever had any any aspiration to go on the Amazon River, um, you can do it. Uh, way to go, MSC. How about that? Now, take a look at this. I think any of us that have cruised at all realize that one of the most dirty places in our cruise cabins is the balcony. I mean, it, it comes to mind already. I can think of rust on balconies. I can think of soot on balconies. I can think of dirt on balconies. I can think of this white stuff that you see here. Could be salt, could be anything from the exterior of the world making a home on the cruise balcony. And it's unsightly and it, it can turn you off. And that's certainly the experience that this cruiser here, Karen Fry had cruising on P&O's Pacific Explorer. She left Adelaide, she's an Australian cruiser, and she traveled to Hobart and Melbourne for her week-long cruise. She paid $6,000 for this balcony cabin, and when she got back, she took to social media saying that her balcony was unusable for her. It was grotty, which uh, I looked it up. It means unpleasant. I don't know if that's a common Australian phrase. I've never heard it, but uh, I'm going to try to start using it. That's why I've said it a lot in this video. It was dirty. She had rust. She had the white stuff. She had the soot. She had everything that makes a balcony unpleasant. And she said it was too unpleasant for her to use during her cruise. And so what did she do to rectify? the situation? Did she tell her cabin attendant? No. Did she go down to guest services and tell them? No. Uh, she waited till the cruise is over and she took to social media to post pictures and to talk about it. And uh, yeah, uh, look, I, I completely can connect with this idea that nobody wants a dirty balcony, but there's really only one way to fix it while you're on the cruise. You've got to let somebody know. And uh, that was P&O's response, like, hey, we're sorry you had a bad time, but you could have told somebody. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a clean balcony, especially when you drop six grand, but at the same time, anything that's exterior on the cruise ship that's being exposed to uh, port cities, being exposed to the ocean, being exposed to nature, it's gonna get dirty, it's gonna get rusty. Salt water, salt salt air, bad for metal. And so you see a lot of rust. She said she didn't wanna chase down the cruise staff. She was mindful of how hard they are working. So she just decided just to keep it to herself and say something when she got home. Um, again, I don't fault her for being upset, but I share the story because you gotta, you gotta advocate for yourself on the cruise line. If you spent all that money for that one week, it's in that one week that you gotta advocate for yourself to get what you paid for. I know people don't want to be seen as complainers or, you know, that kind of thing, but, uh, yeah, if something's bothering you on a cruise ship, uh, be nice and let people know and they will bend over backwards to help you. That's been my experience um, and the experience of many people that I know 
uh, you know, see something, say something. I know it's cliche, but if you really want to get resolution, you, you got to do it while you're on the cruise. You can't, you know, you can't just, you know, cry sour milk when you get home. I mean, you can, and you're going to, you know, get this kind of attention, but uh, it's not going to fix your problem on the cruise ship. Boom. That is your cruise news for a Monday. I got a ski daddle. I'm getting my first thyroid check to see if the medicine is at the appropriate level. I'm excited about that. And uh, yeah, we'll be back here to do it again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Make sure you check out the recommended video. This is Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise.